We're live. Hello. How are you? Welcome to Cooking It Raw. You caught me right in the middle of dealing with technology here. You know, so I was just updating, you know, on some of my sites to let them know that hey, we were experiencing a little technical difficulty. I think we get the kinks out. But I want to say to you, for those who are tuning in to Cooking in a Raw on the website, that's on cookinginaraw.net. That should be coming up soon. But for now, those who are watching on Facebook and those who are watching on Google Plus, Cooking in a Raw Google Plus, by way of Google Hangouts, yo, 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 yo. I'm your host, Lars Shelby, a.k.a. Shell. Welcome to Cooking in the Raw, where everything happens live. If I make a mistake, it's for real. So I'm always nervous when I start these shows because I never know what's going to happen. Well, you know, for some of you around the world who may be watching, it's springtime. Okay, well, it's springtime everywhere. But where I am, I'm looking at flurries right now outside my window here. So we still have flurries, hence my mountain man beard. So I said to myself, as soon as we get some regular sunshine here, the mountain man beard comes off and I can start profiling. Would it be my right side? <laughs> would it be my left side, which I tell you what, I'm digging my beard though. I, if it wasn't too hot in the summer, I would probably sport it and let it just grow all the way down here. But let's get this show started. Today's show, being as though, or seeing as though we are in Lent, you know, Lent started, you know, a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago, maybe. So since we're in Lent here, I thought I'd prepare some dishes that will be great for your time during Lent, or great for your dinner table, or even a snack you turn it into. So we'll do some things with some fish some things with some vegetables, you know, because you bypass meat and meat byproducts. Throw a little soy yogurt in there, so it should be a very interesting show. Never done these things before, and that's where the raw part comes in at, because I don't know what it's going to taste like. I try to create these things off the top of my head. So I'll just usually go buy some ingredients and say, boom, I'm going to make a show out of what I've just purchased. Let me get started here. I have some onions on the stove here. I'll let you know it's getting a little caramelized here. Let's get that going. So I want some caramelized onions. That's going to go for the soup. All right. So we got our pot here for that. Let me bring this over. My hot board. So simple carrot soup here. You know, when I make soups, you know, all the times you find people that will make a vegetable soup and they're adding chicken stock. Well, that's not vegetables now. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna. Add, I like to do a trick. You know, things I learned in some of my travels. You know, going overseas and making soups. You know, just starting with water. You know, letting the vegetables themselves add flavor to the water. So I have my carrots here. I'm gonna toss my carrots here. I'm gonna put in a couple of cloves of garlic here. Simple flavoring. Then I'm gonna chop in, rough chop some onion here. You see, what's going to happen, all this is just simply going to be pureed in the soup. All right, let's put a little bit more onion in there. Simply pureed in the soup. Then I'm going to come over here and get myself some water, some filtered water here. Now, I just want enough water to cover, to soften the veg. Okay? So I'm not talking a lot of water here. So there you go there. That's all we need. Can you get that? Now what? So you're talking about an inch or so above. I'm going to put this on the back burner here. Crank that up. Get that going. I want that to be nice and softened. So while that's going, onions are going. Hopefully everything comes together. My director tells me, you have 30 minutes. Let's see if I can put it all together in 30 minutes. So while that's going, save this onion here. And then I'm going to chop up some potatoes for the fish. So I got some baby red potatoes here I'm going to chop up and those are going to get boiled so that we can have those with our salad. So if there's anyone out there watching the show, please say hello, join in with the chat on Facebook, join in with the chat on our message on Google Plus and say hello and I'll give a shout out to you. Make sure you let us know who you are. Alright? I'm going to cut these potatoes up. Just nice, even cuts, very simple, so that they can all be done at the same time. So it's going to be part of the salad, but nice and close. If the potatoes this small, just kind of cut it in half. All right? This is going to be kind of rough, OK? 
Okay, a real rustic type of salad. But using all that snoo, the best I can do when it comes to spraying where I am right now. You see, I have my right now my body is in a little transition. And that transition is I don't know. I don't know if it's winter still or spring still. I know my body is telling me, hey, you know, we're ready for some fresh berries. You know, we're ready, you know, for some uh, fresh green beans and peas. You know, and I, I, I have to say this, though. When I moved here, I started eating more and more seasonally. You know, so it's been an advantage of myself living here in uh, Wisconsin so that I can now truly eat seasonally. But there's always that transition period, as I said to you, for myself, uh, being from California, that, wow, I should be eating these type of foods now. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit more potatoes in here. Enough for the salad. We're chopping a little bit more here. Very simple salad with just onions and herbs. Onions are doing their thing over there in the pot. Now, those who have been following me know how I feel about electric burners, but I learned to make do. So it goes a little bit slower. Let's get some water in here. Again, fill some water. I just want to boil these potatoes or simmer these potatoes until nice and soft. I'm going to add a little salt to this water. So I try to grind some of my sea salt so I can have this a nice fine grind. So a little bit of salt is going to be added to the potatoes here while they're cooking. Let's toss a lid on that. Speed that process up. All right, this is boiling, doing its thing. I can set that lid over here. And we'll just let that go. And that's cooking. And that's cooking. All right, we'll save these. You know, so I get these nice, great tomatoes. You know, uh, I know I'm kind of eating out of season for here, but I thought it would be nice and beautiful and colorful for the dish. So I'm going to pop one of these in and give it a taste. Nice and sweet. Still on the balance of the city there, but nice and sweet. It's going to be even better when we are now in the summertime. We actually grow them here. So that's doing this thing. I got the blender going here. Blender ready. Make sure all this is off. Safety first. That's off and ready to go. And I'm ready for it. We're going to switch out boards here. I'm going to pull out the top. And what I have here is just a nice, simple Atlantic cod that I just picked up this afternoon that I'm going to be using for today's demonstration. Take off my knife, ready for the next line here. And gloves. Anytime you're having raw meat, you know. Try to use some gloves, you know, just to keep yourself from cross-contaminating your food here. So I'm going to put this right there. Got a new board. I want to bring my meat or my fish, shouldn't call it meat, my flesh, my fish up the temperature here. And in doing so, when I get ready to cook it, then the cooking time will take so long that it can perform a really nice brown crust for me. All right, so let's get that. So does anybody out there want to say, hey, I'm ready for you. So nice, again, simple pieces of Atlantic cod here. Very light, very delicate. It's going to absorb a lot of flavor here. Especially with the vinaigrettes, we'll get that laid out. I took the liberty of fruit cutting some of these earlier. All right, now I'm going to save the rest. So I know there's a few of you out there on Google Plus, and I would love to bring you in on camera with us. If you want to just let us know that you're there, 
that would be great. Don't be shy now. <laughs> so I'm going to check my carrots here. If they are going to be a minute. So that's doing its thing. I'm going to need that later. Onions here are doing their thing. Everybody's happy. Everybody's cooking, which is the way I like it. So how many people out there are curious? I wanted to know, so what kind of foods do you eat for Lent? You know, again, I mean, Lent is a time, you know, where sacrifices are made. And some people give up certain things during Lent. Some people give up ice cream. Some people give up meat. Some people give up sugar. What did I give up? I said I wasn't going to work that hard. <laughs> so far, it's so good. Potatoes are doing their thing here. Everybody's happy. I'm going to put this lid back on so that I can cook a little bit faster. Doing this thing. All right. That's working. That's working. This is for fish. So I'm going to make this vinaigrette. So the vinaigrette can be nice and ready. Very, very simple vinaigrette. You know, I don't know if you can see my mad laboratory spices here. Let me bring them up close. From the previous show, you can recall these. This is where all the magic happens right here. I keep all my spices in these little containers here, spices and herbs, and so I can mix and match and create many different flavors. So I'm going to do a vinegar right here. I'm going to do some parsley, and I'm going to do some Italian herb here. Very simple. Lemon vinaigrette. So I have some lemon juice here, fresh squeezed lemon juice in a plastic container. Kind of looks like a lemon too, huh? Well, you know, it's not summer yet. So mm -hmm. this is when in the fall and the winters, you know, where you make do with ingredients that exist. Sometimes you can even make your own lemon juice, freeze it, get some lemons in the summertime, squeeze them, get the juice out, freeze them, take the skins, and do what's called preserved lemons, am I right? Thing. So nothing goes to waste, except for the seeds. Unless you want to plant the seeds and wait for a while, but you get a little bit of sprout, you know, but hey, that's another show. Mm -hmm. So I got a little bit of uh, lemon juice in here. Let's put a little bit more. Now, when making a vinaigrette for your greens or for your salad, I mean, the goal is, is just making enough to cover. Now, I'm not going to whisk this while I do it, because I want to get all of my ingredients in, and eventually it breaks down as it sits, but you can always just whisk it back together. We're going to do what's called emulsifying. You know, we want it to tighten up, you know, so it can do a nice cover on the greens. So there's this here. A couple of grinds of pepper, a couple of grinds of salt. Now, notice I didn't salt and pepper the potatoes. I'm sorry, the carrots. Because I'm saving that for when I actually get to the point of making the soup. Okay, a little bit of salt here. Now, we're working with some seafood here. And you see here, it's nice and thin, separated. See how it gets nice and creamy? Which is what we want here. Nice and creamy. We'll take a taste. Make sure we have enough of our flavoring here. Oh, you get a nice taste of the lemon. Nice fruit is from the olive oil. Perfect. Herbs with a salt pepper. Perfect. Should work out wonderful with the greens. Sometimes I like to kick it up a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to kick it up. I'm going to put in a little bit of garlic powder. I will be adding some onion, some fresh sliced onions to this as well. And that's going to add to the flavor. So I'm not going to add any onion powder because I'm going to be doing the fresh onion. Everyone's doing their thing. Everyone's happy. That's what we want. Check on our caramelized onion. Now caramelizing onions is a very, very slow process. So I kind of started doing the butter stroke again. First we have to get them softened. Once they get soft and then they begin to color, you can see a little bit of color going on there. But I'm not going for a deep, deep color. I'm only going for just a nice golden, light golden color of caramelization. Bing, bing, bing. Our fish here is coming to temperature. Let's slide these over to the side. 
We've got salt and pepper dolls in a minute. Our vinaigrette is looking pretty good. How about we make just a little bit more? Because I have uh, two grazers here, and they like their salads. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, yes. A little bit of oil. <laughs> now, for measurement, notice I didn't measure. For measurement, when you're measuring for your vinaigrette, I like to go with a ratio of two to one. Two parts oil to one part vinaigrette. Some people go three to one. You know, so it really depends, you know, how much vinegar taste you want or how much citrus taste you want in your vinaigrette. I, myself, I just want enough in the background to know it's there, just the flavor, but I want to taste more of the oil itself, the flavor of the oil. Everybody's happy? So I'm going to start my pan to heating. So you notice I have different oils. I have a cooking oil, a cooking extra virgin olive oil. I have a eating extra virgin olive oil. And then I have just simple vegetable oil that I cook with if we're something neutral. So a little couple of grams of salt here on the fish. And pepper. We'll flip this over. Eat the other side. Now I didn't do my trick that I normally do, in which I lay my spices down on the plate, then do a flip. I didn't do that this time. But that's an easy way to season both sides of your meats or fish, is to lay your spices down on the plate, flip it over, lay it down on the plate, and you just have to season one side. Easy peasy. So you're looking at the fish now, deciding, okay, which is going to be my pretty side? Because that's the side you want to go down, let it go down in the pot first. That's going to give you a nice color. But sometimes you can mess up. If that happens, then the other side becomes your pretty side or presentation side. So let that hang out there. Continue to come to temperature. This is heating. All right. Check on our carrots here. Still working. Carrots are still working. Check it on our potatoes. It's all veg. Okay. So as soon as this comes up to temperature, then we will begin cooking our cod. I'll get the plate ready to be dressed. And our greens. So I cleaned and cut up some kale and have spinach blended in here. That's going to go inside of our vinegar red here. Let's get some onion in there. You know, just to add a little bit more flavor. So fresh onion. Now I like to cut those. See if we get the I like to cut those nice and thin. Let's get a bigger knife. I like to cut the onion nice and thin. You know, you'll want to be. You don't want to chunk on onion. Well, some people like onion to chunk on. I borrowed that word from uh, my director, Jackie Schwartz. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to thinly slice these because just, I just want flavor, you know. I want, to, I want it to be there, but I, want to, I don't want you to know that it's there. Can you get a look at that? Paper thin. You can see right through it. That comes from two days of practicing my knife skills, two days prior to the filming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get some onion flavor in there. All right, and I'm going to toss some greens in here now. That pot behind me is going to be ready here shortly. We'll set you here. We get that nice and coated. Ah, beautiful. Coming together. Now it's funny. You, you can have this two ways. You can have it with a cold salad, or you can even have it with the warm salad. I'm going to go with a cold salad. I'm going to take some of these cherry tomatoes, get it all tossed in. I want everything to be nice and coated already in the vinegar red and flavor. Potatoes are going to be hot to warm as soon as they're ready. You know, serve those on the side. You can even toss a little simple vinegar red with that as well. Now, I'm from the old school. You know, I'm from the old school. I like to touch my food, you know, so I'm going to toss this with my hands here. All right, pots are back there talking to me. <laughs> we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. That's good, because I'm not ready. All right, so let's take care of that. Wash my hands now. 
Now, if this were just olive oil, I would have rubbed it into my skin, as always. Okay. That's how I keep a nice, smooth skin. Cooking. Cooking and beauty. Cooking is a beauty secret. What do you think about that? That could be another show. Cooking and beauty secret. Okay, our pot here is nice and hot. All right, let's get our fish in. Put it to the pot away from me so that the splatter won't come back on you. There's one. There's two. We'll do that right here. So let's make it nice and brown. Check in on our veggies. They're still doing their thing. Checking on our potatoes. Still doing their thing. Everybody's happy. That's cooking. Our first dish is going to be ready. Let's get some of this greens on the plate. Now, also, when I, when I say when cooking, you know, utilizing all your senses. You need to listen to what's going on behind you. You need to smell what's cooking so that you won't burn anything. I, I, have I done that yet on the show? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it. Yes, I have. That's what makes it fun. <laughs> All right, that's the thing. Let's get a little scratch out of here. We'll see what we got. What color? Okay, we'll let that cook a little bit more. Make sure that's not too hot. It's not all going to come together. The clock is ticking. The carrots are close. Close, close, close. Everybody's doing their thing. Cook, cook, cook. I should say, stove, don't fail me now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get this nice and spread out here. Throw in some more tomato. Now, if you like, you can even shave on more onion, which we'll get to that in a minute. Let's flip this. It should be ready. Nice browning. You can see that. Can you get that? You need to tilt the pan. You need to tilt the pan. All right. How's that? You got that? I got that. All right. So nice, even browning there. And we just let that cook. Now, with the white fish, we're cooking it until it begins to plate. You know, uh, some people like to have their fish cooked to a medium, and depending on the fish, some will even go medium rare. But I'm going to go to a medium to mid well on the fish here. But in this case, so it gets nice and flaked. So that's still doing its thing. Our onions are getting right where I need them to be, just for flavor and color. Now, while that's going, I am going to slice up some bread. Here. I'll do this right here. So, while I'm getting ready to spice up this bread, make sure everything's doing its thing. All right? Hey, Brenda, how are you? I can see you. Can you see me? How about now? <laughs> hey, thank you a lot. Thank you very much for joining the show. Glad you can make it. Hope is entertaining for you. Let me check here the fish again. Nice, nice. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. We turn this off because that's not what we wanted to do. Come on, potatoes. I'm going to spice up some bread here. Garlic bread. Bought this for today. I'm going to put some of this in the oven to be served with our bisque. Well, I'll toss in two slices. It's right in the oven. Let that toast. I mean, cooking. It's very easy. It should be very fun. Potatoes are getting very close here. Make sure we get a nice little mound here in the onions. Let me show you the onions where you are right now. This is about as much color as I want on the onions right here. Okay? I'm not going to go all the way 100% caramelization on here. That's going to take too long. But that's also for another dish. All right, that's the next thing. Carrots. So putting the lid almost works on the carrots almost works as a pressure cooker. Okay. Everybody's happy. Clicking up real nice. So we'll take this off. Sit you right here. Mm 
we'll take off our fish. Okay. Now I bring a little oil, but I still want to just dab a little bit. Take some oil off. Let's move this over here. Hot pan. Let's get rid of this. Move this way. We'll let that settle. Get ready to plate that. I'm going to do some fresh onion slices on here. Even though we have some already in the vinaigrette. So we throw on some fresh onion slices. It's all simple flavor. Now this can be, depending on the size of fish that you're doing, the fish I have here now are probably approximately two ounces each. Two and a half, two ounces, two to two and a half ounces each. It will make for just a nice appetizer or a before the meal type of thing, but great for your lit table. There's one. And there's the other. Now I'm going to get a spoon here. Now what you can do, I got some vinaigrette in here. You can take a little bit of the vinaigrette and just spoon just a little bit of it right on top. Right on top of the fish. Okay, we're going to throw down some parsley. A little extra color here on top. And there's that dish. Oh. Hey, number one. So we have here our fish done. Now let's get back over here to the potato. Let's move this to the front so we can watch it here. Turn this off. Check our potato. All right, potatoes look nice. They're nice and tender. Let's get that off the pan. Okay, remember I said potatoes are going to be somewhat hot. Now, nothing's going to have any butter or any animal fat in it. So now we're going to do it again. Take some olive oil. Just some olive oil over it. This is going to be like a loose type of salad. A little bit of the lemon. Just a little bit this time, not a lot. Let's toss some herbs in here. Let's go with some oregano this time. So a little bit of oregano in here. And we're going to do my favorite, double zero. <laughs> Who knows about that double zero? I know about that double zero. You know about that double zero? Yes, I do. <laughs> what about you, Jess? Do you know about that double zero? You bet. <laughs> I think I said a while back, I have to do a video on spices. Uh, I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we get that tossed up here. Get some salt. A little bit of salt. Some pepper. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Mm, wonderful. Nice and creamy, but just the olive oil. So I'm going to nice little bite to it. I'm going to serve this right alongside the fish. So very nice looking and simple lint dish for you to have. So ladies, it looks pretty good, Shell. It okay. does. You guys can dig into that when you're ready. <laughs> oh, can I get a picture? We get a picture of those and dig into that. And so now, you have to get about the bread. That would have been a good raw moment. <laughs> Forgetting about the bread. Someone would have said, did he put bread in the oven earlier? Okay. I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> if you did, I didn't remember. <laughs> That's okay. That's why I'm here. That's right. <laughs> We're over here. <laughs> I'm going to put the rest of those salad greens in here. 
so that I can maybe have some of this salad myself. So something, again, something easy and simple you can do when you have friends coming over. Doesn't take any time. Whoops. Did you see that one? I saw That's it. That's raw. <laughs> okay. So you have some salad left over. You just bring that to the table. People can help themselves as they go. Wash the hands. Now to deal with that soup. Conquer the soup. Let's get this over here to our hot board. Slide. Bring it forward. Now, very, very simple step here. Get rid of our lid. Now remember I said this is all water, okay? All water. This isn't about chicken stock. It isn't about adding all the flavors. It's just the natural flavors that will come from the vegetables, the onion, the garlic, the carrot. I mean, you can add whatever you would like. You know what? Just put them all in. Put them all in there. Oh. There we go. Another raw moment. <laughs> Another raw moment. Okay, so that's all, man. Let me get some of this water in here. Just a little bit to loosen it up. Now, see, we're going to season this as we get it back into the pot. So, puree. Now, that's a raw moment. <laughs> we, we, we have no power. Let's try it again. Oh, there we go. Woo! That was a close one. That was a close one there. That's going to say. You know, I'm always afraid of that. I'm always afraid of plugging something in and it not working. Oh, that would have been a good one there. All right, let's test it out. Make sure we get it off here and off, off. We're going to turn this one on low. So that's the thing about electric, you know, since you have no fire, unless it's cranked up high, you have no idea where it's at. All right, man, a little bit more liquid to this. All right, puree some more. Okay, nice and smooth. If you had a chicken stock, not chicken stock, but a vegetable stock, you can use a vegetable stock in here you know, to add more flavor and to also thin it out. Again, I'm just going to use water and there's our puree. I'm going to use my water to thin it out. So there's our puree, nice and smooth. Add that back to the pan. Adjust the texture. Put some of our liquid here. Then we're going to flavor it. All right. Let's get this back over here. So, Shell, yes. we have um, one of our view viewers. They would like to know what kind of fish are you using? Cod. Atlantic cod. All right. Just a nice, simple, neutral fish. Woo! That's toasty. <laughs> Woo, baby. Okay. Almost forgot about it. You see there? That's a raw moment. All right, so that's doing its thing. Let's season it up. Some salt. Need a tasting spoon. Now, the thing with cooking is you must always taste along the way so you know how much seasoning you're going to need. You get that nice sweetness from the carrots, which is a good thing. Nice rustic flavor here. You get that heated up. I'm going to add some more salt to it. Some more pepper. Again, cooking doesn't have to be a chore. It should be fun. It should be simple. I'm going to throw in some parsley. 
I'm still working off of my dry parsley from the summer, which is awesome. I can't wait to have fresh parsley again. What else should I go with in here? Hmm. Let's do some onion powder in here. You know, cut, bring out more of that onion. Okay. Come on, pinch more. That's like three pinches of onion there. Then I'm going to put in some garlic. Two pinches of garlic. All right, give it a stir. Uh oh, let's get another spoon here. It's never good when you say uh oh, oh when you it's go never good when you say uh oh. <laughs> it's never good. In my A, there we go. Let me get that a stir. That's getting nice and hot. All right, now let's give it a taste. See where we're at. I'm gonna hold this bowl this time. All right. Or at least we're going to set it here. There we go. Mm. Wonderful. Right where we want it to be. Let's get a bowl. Let's plate this up. Let's take some of our onion. Set it in the bottom of the bowl here. So it looks like a surprise when someone's eating this. I need the bottom of the bowl. Let's take our ladle. Ladle some of that in. Just a little bit. Nice, beautiful color. Turn this down. Beautiful color it is. Two slices of toast, our spoon, and there's the next dish. So what you have here is just a simple. Maybe just bring this a little bit. Yeah, I was saying, maybe that. Tilt that. So get a color. Oh no! On that. Oh, that was good. All right, so get go. a color on that. You know, you got the herbs in there. You have the onion in the bottom. So as they're eating soup here, they begin to taste. They'll pick up some onion. Like wow, nice caramelized onion. A very nice simple dish for Lent. For you to have, for you to enjoy, you can make for yourself, for your friends, as an appetizer, or as a full meal. I hope you enjoyed this show as much as I enjoy presenting you the show, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Cooking in the Raw. I'm digging in.